Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Tom's Hardware Podcast. I'm going to give a few seconds for folks to start streaming in. Uh, this is the broadcast for October 13th, which is Amazon Prime Day, which for us at Tom's Hardware uh, is a big deal because there's a lot of coverage going on to help folks uh, to help our readers find great deals. So we've been real, the three of us have been really busy um, wor working on that. Uh, so um, so we'll talk a little, so we'll give people a few few secs to show up and we'll talk a little bit about how you can, how um, things you can do to, to, save, a, to save a few bucks uh, on Raspberry Pi stuff. Uh, and then today we're going to talk about gaming on Raspberry Pi because everybody loves gaming on Raspberry Pi. It is a huge platform for emulation. And so we'll talk about the major emulation options that you have, some of the hardware that you, some of the hardware that you have that can give you that retro gaming feel that we all, that we all enjoy. And so Let's get started. So as always, I'm Tom's Hardware Editor-in-Chief, Abram Pilch. I'm joined today by Tom's Hardware Associate Editor, Les Pounder, and Raspberry Pi expert, Ash Puckett. And all of you, I want to remind everyone that if you are listening or watching live, we are excited to take your, your questions and comments. So, uh, so, so let's get started. So, um, what uh, so first of all wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Prime Day and some of the Raspberry Pi related deals that people can get where they can really save a lot of money on odds and ends that you need with Pi and I think we all know that there's a lot of odds and ends that we a lot of odds and ends that we have for Raspberry Pi. They really Pi. went all out this Prime Day. For Raspberry Pi stuff, there's a lot more than I thought there would be as far as like cases and accessories goes. There's a few discounts, <laughs> including on including on retro, including on, re including on retro gaming. So, Les, you uh, you were working on our article on best the best Prime Day Raspberry Pi deals. What what are some of the things that you you saw that were particularly good good sale that folks should be looking out for? The interesting stuff that I saw today, um, it, it went from really cheap, really necessary stuff all the way to extravagant stuff. So I'm going to start at the lower end of the scale, first of all. Um, being a maker, we need lots of stuff around us. We need breadboards. We need jumper wires, that sort of thing. And there was a deal on today. I think it was uh, for $7.99 for four breadboards. Now, these weren't little piddly breadboards that are about this big. These are proper full-size uh, 430 points, so the big breadboards with the rails. And to be you know, being a maker, you do need lots of breadboards. I have loads to hand. I've got more than this in a box somewhere. So if they're going cheap, grab them so you can build your next pie project. But going up to the other end of the scale, we had these um, brilliant uh, embedded screens in a case. So it was a Raspberry Pi case with a screen inside it which just seems mind-blowing you can get a screen in a case when the pie is only you know this big it's nothing full touch screen the resolution is not fantastic i think it's um 320 by 240 i think something like that. there isn't a higher res one as well well they're really handy to stick on your desk for just little information terminals so put an old pie inside there with wi-fi or a wi-fi dongle and just have it relay information to you. So if you want to keep an eye on the news, you want to learn about random quotes from people, just scrape Wikipedia and get some data sent to this piece of kit. Um, there's also a, a large screen as well. Ah, your mouse is just hovering over it there. The um, long runner, seven inch capacitive screen. Now, the resolution on that is 1024 by 600. And it's a standard HDMI input, but it's also got a USB interface. So you can plug it into a Pi or a computer and you can use it as a touchscreen. So you've got a second screen and a touchscreen. Brilliant for a Pi. I've got one of these myself. I embedded it in an arcade cabinet and just didn't use the touchscreen element of it. There's a theme for tonight. Um, it's got 
brilliant little mounting holes on the top corners, well, sorry, uh, the corners of the unit. So you can just put some M3 or M4 uh, screws through, mount it straight into the cabinet, ready to go. And because it's HDMI and USB, you haven't got to worry about specific uh, power supplies like DC barrel jacks or crimp terminals, that sort of thing. It just works. So that's that little screen there, I think, is fantastic. And if you ha have the money and the opportunity, grab one. So are there, Ash, are there any Raspberry Pi accessories that you're looking for this this prime day? Cases. You mentioned the touchscreen case, but I wanted to find a good case that looks good for a Pi 4 because I just got one that I wanted to have as like my staple Pi 4 for projects. So what about like a go-to Pi 4 case? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, there are cases that are absolutely ridiculous. So if you, uh, one way, by the way, we, we're rounding up the best Raspberry Pi deals on tomshardware.com as we, as we find them. But if you want to find them, the thing to do is to go to amazon.com right now uh, and click on the Prime Day banner. And then there's a search and you can search specifically for Raspberry Pi. So that will bring up mostly things that are good for Raspberry Pi. You see that you'll get other things that are sort of related, like here's a micro bit kit. Um, you might get more, you, you know, you'll get portable monitors that could or could not be used for Raspberry Pi. Uh, here, here's a kit that's actually would be a good gift for someone. Uh, the, there's a Raspberry Pi 3A Plus official kit with the keyboard, the mouse, and and the wires and instruction manual for $45. That's, you know, really not bad. Uh, but, of course, ideally, ideally these days you'd start somebody off with a four, but you'd be spending a little, you'd be spending more than that and you wouldn't get the complete kit. Um, there's all kinds of things like wires and breakout kits. Uh, I myself am always looking for more screens. Uh, one thing that I'm I'm looking for in particular right now is a new robot kit, like a robot car kit. And there's some there's some decent deals going around on robot kits. So uh, here's one from I, I don't know how to pronounce the names of these UCtronics or Ucatronics. Uh, that that is a robotic car that is sixty three dollars normally normally eighty. And it comes with both a camera and an ultrasonic sensor. So, uh, my and of course the hat, the the batteries and the hat you need to use to get the batteries to run on it, because that's, um, but that's that's an issue, because um, you know you can buy try to buy the acrylic and things like that to make a car, but to but most people want to power their Raspberry Pi with a phone type of charger, and it's really difficult to mount that type of charger onto a robot car uh, because those aren't really made to be mounted. Uh, the one exception being Pimeroni's STS Pi, which I happen to have here where there's like a little bracket that comes with it where you can mount, just mount this really tiny, this one really tiny anchor USB uh, battery, but most of the time it's difficult. So you want something that's gonna convert, um, I think it's using to uh, lithium ion, small lithium ion batteries uh, into, into the right amount of voltage. Uh, my son is really, my son who's eight is really on my case for us, really wants us to do another Raspberry Pi robot build, particularly a car one, especially after his Arduino robot built, car build caught fire this week. Um, that uh, I still trying to figure out how it happened, but he, uh, I was sitting in the, I was sitting on the couch and he, comes to me and says, Dad, why is the why why is there steam coming out from the from the from the from the Arduino board? I turn and there's like smoke coming up uh, off the board on this on this kit we had, which we've had for a couple of years, which has been a good kit. It's the Elegoo uh, Arduino smart car kit, uh, and it would seem to be coming off the hat. And I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because he had the pins loose or something. But the VRM on on the shield, on the shield for the Arduino was smoking. So he's like, "Oh, what are we gonna do now?" Oh, I guess we'll have to get another new robot. That's like a maker milestone or something. Catching electronics on fire. He's growing yeah. up. From yeah, yeah, I know. As long as the house doesn't catch fire, I guess we're in good. Fire safe. I, I guess we're in good. I guess releasing magic. Smoke. Yes, I guess we're in great shape. 
So let's talk I'm about a ballpark it though. If I could, before we segue yeah. away, let me send you a link if you could pull it up for our viewers. This one is also on sale for Prime Day, and I've been looking at getting this one for my nephew. He's about 13 years old, and this pie. It's a, also a robot pie car kit, and it includes, um, the link is in StreamYard, but it includes an ultrasonic sensor, and I really like the tires. They have tracks, and it looks like a little tank, and so I'm so tickled that this one was discounted for Prime Day because I've had my eye on it for a couple of weeks. Oh, let's see. Oh, yes, this. Yeah. This. Oh, that the, cool. the Yaboom. That looks that, dangerous. I, 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 really I would I would love to get that. You just have to, you know, I uh if I spend a, if I spend close to a hundred dollars on, on a robot body, I might get in, in trouble with the family. But this is actually the one I would want to because it's very it's a tank and it um there's a lot there's I think Yaboom has a bunch of things on sale and uh yeah. they're all they're all their robot bodies look really good. I've never gotten to try any of them. Uh, anyway, I, I strongly recommend uh, folks check out some of these robot robot kit deals because doing a robot kit is just a blast. So, speaking of things that are speaking of things that are fun and a blast, uh, let's talk about your different options for doing emulation. Ash, I know you've got you've got a, a presentation prepared. I do, sort of. I wanted to talk to everybody about a RetroPie alternative because it seems like the go-to emulator that a lot of people choose when setting up a Raspberry Pi retro gaming rig, it seems to be RetroPie is the first choice. So I wanted to talk about something a little bit lighter, something called Laka. If you've not heard of it before, it's it's basically RetroArch running on a really bare bones Linux operating system. It's running on LibreOlec, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm gonna switch camera feed over here to show you just how many different options they have for download for Laka. Now they usually make a single image per device. So they've got an image made just for the Pi Zero. They've got one for the Pi 2, Pi 3, all the way up to the Pi 4. And you've also got a few other boards in between like uh, Pine 64's Rock 64. Uh, I think they have Banana Pi on here. Um, Odroid, several Odroid models. And what's unique about Laka and this could be seen as a positive thing or a negative thing, but what's unique about Laka is it ships with a set amount of cores. If you're not sure what a core is, that's basically like a like an emulator for a single console. Um, so uh, you would have a core for Nintendo Entertainment System. You would have a core for Super Nintendo Entertainment System, etc. So th there's only so many cores that'll run on a Pi Zero versus a Pi Four. That's why they've separated it into those separate images. Now, what I've got running right here next to me, I'm gonna move my camera over. I've got a 3D plus down here and it is running Laka. And I'm gonna show my computer screen retro arch. It is a little bit different, but because it's so bare bones, I can't get a live stream of my Raspberry Pi feed onto my computer. And one of the main differences you'll notice is above where it says load core, there's a custom icon just for the Raspberry Pi that's got the little Laka logo. Whereas in RetroArch looks like just the little RetroArch alien guy. So there's a, there's an example of like what Laka looks like. And again, it is different from, Ra from RetroPie in that you can't add any extra stuff. If you've got RetroPie, you can add um, some DOS emulation, extra software. You know, it, it's, it's part of Raspberry Pi OS, but it's not exclusive to the entire operating system. So have you guys ever played with Laka? Have you had a chance to put it on any of your pies? Yes, I have. I have, uh, I have put, I have tried it particularly at the time when we were, I have tried it particularly at the time when we were doing, um, when, when Pi, Pi four was new and RetroPie did not support did not support it. So Laka mm -hmm. was the first to support it. Uh, it. the The UI is definitely more set top box like. So it's so it's it's an interesting alternative. It was definitely ahead of the curve for support. RetroPie took a really long time to support uh, support, support Pi four. In our audience, we have Keo Daikin. Uh, who has who has written some stuff for uh, for us and uh, is a, a, is an expert on 
on trying to get Retro Pi for uh, Red Pi to work with Pi Four because he was he was uh, one of the one of the first to get it running, uh, get it running on like an unofficial unofficial ROM. Um, what I uh, what I have here, I have Retro Pi running, and this is uh, we've shown uh, versions of this before on other episodes, but this is a Pimaroni Pi Cade. Uh, this is the 10 inch model. I believe Ash has the seven inch model. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this is an arcade cabinet that you can build. And I believe it costs somewhere around $250 right now. Uh, and it comes with everything but the Raspberry Pi. So it comes with the buttons, the joystick, the 10 inch screen, the, um, you, you got to put it together, which takes a couple hours. And then uh, you can power it off of any standard uh, Raspberry Pi power connector, and then you bring your own bring your own software. There is a there is um, some you know a patch that you put on to use the Pimaroni's PiKit X Hat, which is what gives the buttons control because the system actually sees. Oops, hit the power button. Isn't that smart of me? Um, the system actually sees the um, each of these buttons as a keyboard key when it's assigning, when it's assigning, you know, assignments in, in RetroPie. But it's got a ridiculous number of buttons here and it's got speakers. So it's got six buttons and an, and an arcade style stick on the front. And then it's got two side buttons and two front buttons that you can assign to things like the function for enter coin or select or start. Um, and of course it's got a power button that lights up. Uh, so it's, uh, it gives you a very realistic experience, very realistic experience. Um, Avram, can you believe that mine doesn't have a power button? Wow. Yeah. So, so um, another another piece that I have here uh, to show folks while we're talking about uh, hardware is, and this is on sale today, actually, coincidentally, for $55 on Amazon, is the RetroFlag GPI case. So the RetroFlag GPI case gives you the Game Boy-like experience. Uh, Ash has one. I have one. Uh, mine's mine's booted up and showing uh, showing RetroPie, and it uses a Raspberry Pi Zero. So you stick the Raspberry Pi Zero in that little case that looks like a cartridge. You close. You connect it. You push through the where the pins are supposed to be. You connect a wire for the power, a little cable for the power, and then you pop it in there, and it and it boots. Uh, provide that well you also have to you know put retropy on it uh, or or Laka. you could use whatever operating system you want and then you have you can assign all the d-pad these controls as buttons so that's um so this is this is pretty neat. one thing that's really interesting about it and you could love it or hate it is that it's powered by two AA batteries so um, no charging unless you have rechargeable batteries uh, but it's considering that you get the 2.8 inch screen and the case and the ability to do all this, $55 is, is pretty good. My son loves playing with this. Now, obviously, if you're using a Pi Zero, you can you can play Game Boy style games. Uh, you can play Game Boy style games, but you can't, um, you know, maybe arcade games, maybe like Atari or something. But, you know, I wouldn't try playing like a Nintendo 64 emulator emulator on here. So you can emulate up to um, a Genesis uh, Super Nintendo with a zero because I've done that successfully. Yeah, even even Pi Four is not fantastic for N sixty four. There's still um, some frames, some frame issues here, especially with GoldenEye 007. I don't know why GoldenEye has become the golden standard for for uh, what people want to run, but it seems it to be the, the emulation game. standard. It's cool. It was uh, the best game on the sixty four. It was that Mario. And then uh, Banjo Kazooie. Yes. So uh, I also have here, and Ash has. Uh, these are plentiful and all, all, often on sale. Cases for a three or Raspberry Pi three or four. This is for a three that look like look like an NES. And this one here is also from Retro Flag. Flag. It's called the Nest Pi, and it has it actually has physical buttons on it that push in, and you you can you do everything through a pass-through that's on the inside. 
Um, so you can see you got to push everything on the inside. And, um, you know, it's a neat little compact case. I also have one that's sort of in pieces that is made out of uh, Lego compatible bricks that uh, that they sell called, it's called the Retro, I have, I have the pieces over there somewhere. Um, that that um, the only problem with that one is it's really hard to add or to take your your pie out because you have to unbuild all the all the bricks. Um, so what uh, so what other um, what other gaming hardware and software do you guys do you guys like to use? And I'm kind of curious to the audience what other emulators and game setups do they like to use. Controllers. Do you guys have any favorite controllers when it comes to retro gaming on the Pi? SNES. SNES controllers are perfect. You mean like me? I've got a... <laughs> are those ones? Yep. I've got an 8-bit 8-bit Do Bluetooth version, which uh, I bought from Pimeroni. 8-bit Do is good. Superb. It just feels like the original SNES pads from when I was a kid. It's well, brilliant. shoulder buttons too, right? Yeah. Yep. And it's a lovely shade of yellow mine just because that's what i got um well that that was that's the, the pinnacle of pad excellence for me i mean i, I do like thumbsticks and playstation pads and xbox pads they're fantastic for, for playing games but for me it's just that whole 16-bit era getting hands on with this simple pad and just you know pulling off loads of fighting moves in street fighter 2 with ryu or something like that Avram, do you have your um arcade joystick build oh yes i want to show this so this was actually inspired by a site that Ash uh, works for called How Chew, where they okay. have a great, a fantastic tutorials. Uh, and a couple of years ago, my son and I worked on this. So this is a homemade uh, arcade box, and it has a, uh, it works, but it has a couple. I had it certainly had a couple of challenges, challenges with it. Um, so I followed the the template on How Chew, which was very, which was very helpful. And I got this. Uh, I got this plastic box, and the first thing that I learned in building it was uh, was how difficult it was, at least for me, to drill holes in a piece of plastic. I had to get a new, like, kind of hole driller with circular, a uh, circular saw, and I was surprised at how long it took to drill each of these buttonholes. It like each one would take me like five minutes, and there would be like you know, plastic shards all over, all over the place. It yeah. was, it was, ab it was absolutely, absolutely crazy. And then when it came to kind of drilling holes for like access to the ports, I got a little sloppier because I just would try it and then I'd be like, oh wait, I can't really fit the HDMI in here. Um, so it'd get bigger and bigger. One of the, one of the downsides to this, this build that's unfortunate is, uh, um, one of the downsides to this build that's a little unfortunate is that, uh, and I have it screwed together, so I wish I'd unscrewed it before the show to show you the insides, um, is that for the joystick control, instead of having something like the Pi Kate X hat, which uses the GPIO to, to control the joystick, to get input from the joystick and the arcade buttons, it uses um, a USB joystick controller. And so, to I could I could not figure out a way within the box to move the what to do the USB wire going from the Raspberry Pi to the joystick control the joystick and button controller. So I had to do this ugly thing where I'm running a USB cable outside the box, uh, which is you know which is kind of which is kind of hideous. Scoot um, that against the wall <laughs> so that it'll yes, see it right. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> But it's a carrying handle. Yeah, so you have one of those. You have you're looking at you're showing one of the joystick one of the joystick uh, controllers like I have. Is there some kind of a secret to it, or is the secret to just get something like a Pi-Kade X hat? Just if you were doing Raspberry Pi stuff, just get a Pi-Kade X hat. I've not got a Pi-Kade X to, to hand. It's currently in my Pi-Kade behind me. Um, but this is the older Pi-Kade board. Just try and get that in focus a little more. There we go. Um, just goes straight on top of the Raspberry Pi's GPIO. Power goes into here, and then you break out the connections to the buttons that you want to use. So in case you've got coin inserts, um, player select, then all the up, down, left, and right buttons and the numbered buttons for fighting or shooting or whatever game you're playing. 
It also has a breakout on the side for connecting other devices. So if you've got I squared C or SPI devices, you can plug them in here. There's also a serial console link as well. The Pi X also has connections for the buttons for, I think they're called plasma, where you have illuminated buttons. So I haven't got a plasma button, but it looks similar to this. This is just a standard RK button, but it's yeah, got an LED inside it. Yeah, I have a I have a couple of those on here that um, that I was able to do with the joystick controller as well. Uh, one thing I, I do for those who are thinking about building their own and drilling their own holes like this, I have a a very strong recommendation about the kind of buttons that you should get. Get the buttons that have that have a screw on the bottom of them or a what do you call it, a bolt on the bottom a nut on the bottom of them yeah to not a nut on the bottom of them to screw in there are two kinds of arcade buttons that you can get and there are a lot of sellers for them the cheaper kind are the ones that you have to that you push in right they're they're pushed through but here's the problem with that if your hole is not perfect you're uh, absolutely 100% perfect, mm -hmm. the button will just fall through when you start using it. So these give you some leeway because once you attach the, uh, once you once you screw in the nut, it it's, it's in really securely. Um, also, uh, definitely shop around for the type of buttons because not all are, are equally springy. I've found some that are are not as good as others. These, these green ones, uh, are absolutely, you know, which were kind of an off-brand, are absolutely great. They have that wonderful clicky feel. There's obviously there's a million joysticks like this that you can get. Uh, once you have this kind of stuff set up, though, super easy to install RetroPie or Laka on it, and then yeah. and then and then you're and then you're good to go there. And for those who don't want to drill holes in plastic, which I kind of can recommend, there are actually a lot of kits that have cases with pre preset holes and, and even come with the buttons and the joystick, you know, I want it to be a little bit more um, DIY when I, when I did this. Uh, so you can play with the button placement too, if you want, like maybe you don't like the automatic like straight layout, you can have it arched like the way arcades used to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot. What I would really love to figure out how to do is have some type of wireless arcade controller uh, where where I had a box like this, but instead of actually having the uh, the Raspberry Pi in it, or if there was a Raspberry Pi in it, it would just be for the controls, uh, I would have the Raspberry Pi connected in a separate box to my my screen, and then I'd be able to maybe put this somewhere else, or um, mm. you know, hold it on my lap or something like that, and and game that way. Uh, I would love I would love to to to, ha to have a setup like that. I haven't seen anything. Where you can build a wireless like arcade and button box that connects to the screen with something like this, you got to um, you got to like run the HDMI from it, so you're kind of tethered to you're tethered to the screen. And if you're sitting at a table desk or table, that's great. But if you were sitting on the couch, uh, not not so great. Yeah. Um, Adafruit do uh, a Bluetooth board called the um, Easy Fruit, I think it's called. I've got one somewhere, but it's it's in the, the pile of stuff that I've got. Um, and it literally just is a Bluetooth device that connects up and mimics a, a USB hardware interface device. So you can plug in your controller to that. It could then say it's a Bluetooth controller to your machine and then pair it up and away you go. That's that's bad. cool. That's cool. So speaking of uh, speaking of things that things that you can use for projects, uh, we have one more thing we wanted to talk about today, which is Raspberry Pi related, but it's not a Raspberry Pi. And that is the brand new, as of today, micro or micro bit. So, um, so Les, what do, what do you got? Right. So today, the uh, micro bit educational foundation released micro bit version two. Now, if you're not familiar with micro bit, I'll show you the original version on the overhead camera now. And let's just pop it into focus. There we go. There we go. This is just a really simple microcontroller board. Think of it as an Arduino for people who've never touched an Arduino before. It isn't a computer per se. It's really just something that you can program to do a specific task. So the micro bit in my hand right now is a tiny little board programmed over USB. 
It has two buttons for input, and it has a grid of five by five LEDs on the front, which become a, a screen almost, an LED matrix. It's got crocodile clip connections at the bottom, so you can connect up with alligator or crocodile clips to make electrical connections for easy prototyping. But what's so special about this board is that it doesn't need really much to do. It just You can just plug stuff in and work on it straight away. You don't need to plug in an HDMI keyboard and mouse to this. You just use your laptop or your desktop machine. You just plug in the USB, and then you copy files that you write in a language called make code or in MicroPython, a version of Python 3 for microcontrollers. And you can program this board to do pretty much whatever you want. So it's got built-in sensors. It's got uh, an accelerometer to measure which way up it is, measure gestures, which is uh, shake or tilt, that sort of thing. It has a magnetometer to measure compass directions using magnetism. That can also be used as a magnetic switch. Uh, we also got uh, temperature sensors in here, very basic ones, but built into the CPU. Now, this came out in 2015. It was a, a BBC, a British Broadcasting Corporation back project, but it has since gone on to be its own thing. And the Microbit Educational Foundation released version two today. And I'm going to leave version one there and bring in the box for version two. Lovely cardboard box. This arrives at lunchtime today, UK time. And we get lots of lovely stuff inside. But what we're really interested in is this board. So let's take it out in silver paper, put it to one side. And have a look at the pair of them next to each other. So let's just zoom in just a little bit so we can see a bit more of the detail. There we go. So on the left is the original version, and on the right is the new version. You can see they're pretty much identical to look at. On the right, we have just some cutouts where the GPIO pins are, these little proper clip connections, just so it makes it easier to make a connection. If we flip it over, it's a different thing completely. We've now got the same old sensors, so accelerometer, magnetometer, that sort of thing. But we have in the center a speaker and a MEMS microphone, a really simple microphone that can pick up sound and act on it. So we can program this board now to act on sound. So if we were to use a clap or, or shout, the board can be programmed to react in a certain way. The speaker can also do basic sound playback. You're not going to get hi-fi quality music. It's not going to compete with Spotify. But you are going to get simple tones, and you can compose music using the accelerometer or the buttons to actually change the pitch or tone of the music. So I've got one just plugged in over here. And I've run a simple program on this. Let's just show that. So this is the make code environment. This is where you can program using blocks. So if you ever use Scratch, you'll be pretty much familiar with this. So this is a special beta version for this board. And I've got a special script that says when the logo is pressed, and if I just show you on the close-up camera, you can see the Microbit logo just there where my finger is. If I press it, it will say, hello. And let me see a lovely heart because we're all happy and friendly. Nice. So if I change this now to show something else, so I can show another icon. So let's have, this is a cow, apparently, or devil horns, I'm not too sure. So I'm downloading this directly to the micro bit. So now, when I go back to my close-up camera, if I press this now, it's going to say hello once again. And then we get to see the cow. So let's have something a bit different now. Let's play a sound. So now, can it only store one program at a time, like Arduino? Yeah, that's one of the limitations of, of microcontrollers in general. It's just one program. Uh, there are some special ones that can store more than one, but in general, it's just one. So I'm going to just program. Now, can you hear that noise then? Did you hear a beep by any chance? Uh, no. No? OK. Curse of a live demo. You could just I'll sing just... it. I'm <laughs> not going to torture anyone with that right now. So I've, just, I've written um, a very quick melody using this graphical interface. 
I don't need to know music at all. I can just press these buttons and it just plays a melody in my headphones and I can hear what's going on and work out a tune. So I'm flashing this onto the board now. That's ready to go. Now we're not going to see anything on the screen, Bob. I'll have it on so you can see I'm pressing the button to do this. Now we do it. So there is a speaker working to produce some music. Now in the past with the old micro bit, I'd have to plug in um, a speaker to pin zero and to ground. And it's just a lot of crocodile clips, a lot of cables there that if you're working in a classroom environment, it's just a, a bit of a faff to do. So having it all built in now with this is fantastic. And the beauty as well with micro bit version two, it's the same price as the old one. So you're getting extra features for no more money. I think it's going to be roughly about $20. It's going to be coming out um, about mid to late November. It's going to be out. But we've managed to secure a unit to play around with. And I'll be having some fun with this over the next few days. That's really neat. I can see that being like really useful. That's really cool. So that uh, so it's not going to replace your Raspberry Pi, but it's something no. that you can use. You can use as part of your maker toolkit. So uh, that's all the time we have for this week's podcast. I'd like to thank uh, our guests. Our I'd like to thank our audience for joining us, and I'd like to thank our our hosts as always, Les and Ash. We'll see you next week.